Hi friends, you're back with me, your friend for biology, uh, Professor Girish Kukreja. So today we'll be talking about like, oh my God, so many questions. <laughs> uh, yes, but I was question the question. So these are 2018, like I suppose, neat questions. So let's go one by one without wasting much time. Which of the following is not, uh, I know, which is of the following is not, the key word here is not a prokaryote, right? The one which uh, does not have a well-defined nucleus. You know, all prokaryotes, your U bacteria and archaeobacteria, they come in what they call as category of prokaryotes. So, basically all bacteria, they are prokaryotes. So, we have to find out which bacteria nahi hai, right? Saccharomyces, pehle hi short lag gaya. <laughs> Saccharomyces is not a bacteria. We know that Saccharomyces is a yeast right you all know that it's a yeast right uh, so it is a fungi right so saccharomyces is a unicellular fungi so unicellular fungi which i call as yeast you know which class it belongs to right saccharomyces it belongs to what is called as your ascomycetes right so ascomycetes uh, fungi eukaryotic that is saccharomyces it is not prokaryote so mycobacterium causing your leprosy and tuberculosis the bacteria nostoc is a cyanobacteria which is a blue green algae oscillatory also belongs to the same so these are photosynthetic ones so remaining three they are prokaryotes because they are bacteria so which is not a prokaryote here you have saccharomyces next one the stage during which the separation of a paired homologous chromosome begins so we are talking about meiosis, right? Then we are talking about the homologous chromosomes and the pairing and crossing over. So we are talking about meiosis 1. So we are talking about the prophase 1. <laughs> so there you know that when the chromosomes, they come together, that is your zygotene. So they are pairing in what is called as your zygotene. They cross over each other in what is called as your patchetine. And now um, they are what you call as moving away from each other, that is in your Diploting. Remember, so uh, the homologous chromosomes, they start separating in what is called as your diploting and they are completely separated in diakinesis, right? So there is terminalization, what you say in diakinesis. So separation, it basically starts in what is called as your diploting phase of prophase 1 of meiosis 1, right? So there you have it is diploting. The sweet potato, the one which you eat in your fast, you know eat more in fast than on a regular day i suppose right so uh, the sweet potato is a modified what right is it a stem no the potato the elder brother of sweet potato is what is called as the stem so uh, potato is a modification of your stem yes it is adventitious root yes we know that the sweet potato is a modification of adventitious root right for storage of food they are storing for themselves and you eat them up. <laughs> Anyways, so sweet potato is a modification of adventitious root. It's not of tap root because you know your carrot, radish, turnip and uh, beetroot and all. They are the tap roots which are modified for storage. Rhizome obviously not. You have your uh, adrak, what you call your ginger, then your uh, what you call as turmeric and all that stuff. That comes under what is called as your rhizome, the amorphopalus, the colchicea, many more there. So not going to that. Sweet potato is the modification or a modification what is called as your adventitious root remember that a mosquito oh you hate them <laughs> especially the female ones because they are transmitting the disease so here also it is the female mosquito transmitting the disease causing inflammation of your lymphatic vessels so lymphatic when I talk about so I get that lymphatic filariasis caused by Boucheria bancrofti right so transmitted by the female Culex, right? So that is your lymphatic filariasis. So another name to it is your elephantiasis. So causing lymphatic inflammation and transmitted by mosquito, it is your elephantiasis or uh, as, uh, what you call as filariasis, what I call it. Ascariasis, uh, uh, fecal oral root disease caused by ingestion of infective eggs. Amoebiasis caused by ingestion of that enta amoeba histolytica again by contaminated food and water. Ringworm how much misleading they are so ringworm is not caused by a worm we know it's caused by a fungus so uh, yes so ringworm your trichophyton and dermatophyton microsporum these fungi they are causing those skin infections which we refer to as ringworm so lymphatic filariasis or lymphatic vessel inflammation mosquito bone disease is your elephantiasis coming back to this which is not a homeotherm right which is not warm blooded whose blood is not warm so which is not uh, warm blooded here you have macropus 
the kangaroo what is it so it's a mammal so it is warm blooded you know that all aves and mammals they are warm blooded so you bloody water sorry you want to remove these warm blooded animals from this camel as camel is again a mammal so again uh, it is warm blooded then you have cetacula the one which is doing city that is your parrot so it is a ave so it is also warm blooded this chilon i don't know this doesn't seem to be a mammal and doesn't seem to be a bird what it seems to be mention in the comment box what it is but i'm sure that is not a homeotherm so i am very sure about macropus then i know camelus then i know cetacula so i don't know this so i'll put it out <laughs> you know it you tell me so uh, it is not a homeotherm so chilon is not a homeotherm remember only your mammals and your birds they are homeotherms that is warm blooded the counterpart are cold blooded that is your poikilotherms right uh a t b b c d g d o oh, o oh, sorry it is uh, some some sequence they are given a g g t a t c g c a t something it is a sequence on the coding strand oh so they are talking about the dna they come in the molecular base of inheritance so it is transcribed to mrna yeah so this is a coding strand you know that template strand is used as a template for forming your mrna and the coding strand is actually not used for forming the mrna so we have learned that the sequence on the coding strand and the mrna is exactly the same except that you know that rna doesn't allow t it's so hot out there so it doesn't allow tea <laughs> it doesn't even love the cold drinks <laughs> but it loves you so oh i mean to say that rna you know that it, it instead of tea it has what is called as you so i always say that rna doesn't allow tea it loves you but i love tea <laughs> so anyways uh, so you can join me for a cup of tea so that uh, i love people who love tea <laughs> anyway so this is uh, like what you call as your um, coding strand sequence a g g t a it's simple like aapko kya karna hai yahan pe sirf you have to just check that uh, where is the sequence exactly similar so a a g g g g t ke jagah pe u aa gaya a t ke jagah pe u aa gaya c g c c a you are here done so i love when it is the first option <laughs> i need not bother about all these then right so the sequence of your mrna which is transcribed from this coding strand is option 1 a g o g l o g s u n o g not like that is a g g u a u c g c a u right so stay tuned with me professor girish kukreja for more in biology and if you want some specific topics to be explained or if you want some specific concepts uh, you think that you want to learn from me you can mention in the comment box and you can keep following because you know that we are looking after all the pyqs the neat what you call as question papers we are discussing every day those who are preparing for neat like they'll have an overview like what type of questions have been asked uh, in the past you know that the history repeats itself <laughs> i'm not saying that these questions will be repeated but then yes you get an idea like uh, what exactly you are preparing and whether you are right on the right track or not so stay tuned with me professor girish kukreja thank you bye bye